Good morning. My name is Christina Koziel, and I'm really excited to be here today. I hope to put together a presentation today that gets you excited about the PlayStation platform and the opportunities available for us in advertising this year. From its humble beginnings in college campuses and dingy dark basements, the PlayStation platform has started to make its way through the household and is now part of the living room. What I'd like to do today is walk through a little bit about the video game industry, tell you a little bit about who our audience is on PlayStation, hopefully overcome some of those questions that we all think that, mm, I think the audience is a teenage boy eating Cheetos and drinking Mountain Dew in a basement, and convince you that there are adver advertising opportunities available for your clients here today to reach an untapped audience who's clamoring for content and entertainment. The overall industry for gaming has grown substantially. As of last year, software sales for gaming reached 15.4 billion. That's billion with a B. And as you can see, we've reached the tipping point. 51% of US households now own a gaming console. And 155 million Americans play video games. But they're not just playing games. They're watching TV, they're watching movies, they're streaming music, and they're watching live events. But the most interesting stat up here for me is that the eighth generation breakdown really shows that PlayStation continues to hold its worldwide domination in the market. We put together a little sizzle reel for those of you non-gamers. Actually, how many of you uh, own a PlayStation? How many own an Xbox? Anybody own both? Well, I'm, pl I'm pleased that we have a lot of gamers in the room, but for those of you who are unfamiliar with PlayStation, we put together this as a reel to get you excited, to show you the innovation, the amazing games, the passionate fan base that PlayStation has garnered since 1995, and really to showcase that we are building the best entertainment experience out there. We want advertisers to be a part of it. We want you to get excited. Let's watch the clip. So I mentioned that PlayStation was released in 1995. It was groundbreaking, revolutionary, and innovative. It was the first gaming console to switch from cartridges, and I see there's a few of you that might be <laughs> old enough to remember the cartridges, and moved to a CD-based uh, format for gaming. It dominated a space that was owned previously by Sega and Nintendo. It really legitimized video gaming. In 2000, we released PlayStation 2, which brought DVD and CD audio capabilities to the PlayStation. It was the first console to reach 150 million in sales. 150 million in sales. In 2006, we released PlayStation 3, and PlayStation 3 really changed the face of gaming. It allowed users to download games when they were released, and it was the first player launched with Blu-ray. We hit 80 million in global sales, and we were really excited about the first time that you could download movies directly from the console. It was huge, like I said, revolutionary. But we didn't stop there. We felt that we could do better. And in 2013, PlayStation 4 was released. In 48 hours, we hit a million units of sale. There used to be a chart that showed the growth of the first time you launched uh, an electronic gadget and how long it took to a million units and the bar graph would go all the way across the screen. This was a little teeny tiny sliver, a million units in 48 hours. PlayStation 4 really brought social interaction to gaming. Fastest selling console in US history. And not only did it sell to pe people who had previous versions of PlayStation, but we were also able to steal share away from people that owned Xboxes and Wiis. We continue to be a market leader worldwide. At E3, we talked a lot about the games. As a matter of fact, PlayStation is for gamers, and that's really our core focus. We want to be able to provide exclusive games, play at first titles, and content that our users are constantly discovering on the platform. The more popular the platform, the more publishers want to code and write games specifically for our platform. 
We had a few big wins that we released this um, June at E3. The first was Call of Duty. This was previously a Play at First Xbox title. And due to the popularity of the PlayStation platform, we got the Call of Duty publishers to release it to PlayStation users first. The other really big thing we announced, and the reason we continue to be successful, is the continued adoption of SharePlay. Not only can you share socially with your friends what you're doing, what you're um, viewing, how you're playing a game, but this was our set apart moment. We allow folks to play games with their friends when their friends do not own the same game as you. So games like Star Wars Battlefront that's releasing this year, or Final Fantasy VII. These games, you may not want to purchase right off the bat, but if your friends have them, they are able to share multiplayer game with you, and you are in, in, excited, you get really, really passionate about that game, and you'll move to go to buy it right there in the PlayStation Store. I think for holiday, we have a ton of advertising opportunities available within some of these packages to really pick up on the press, the hype, and the halo effect of holiday buying. These holiday packages uh, are in front of you, and we'll continue to talk about those throughout the next few weeks as plans continue to develop. We'll find the right game and the right title for your advertiser. I think there's a lot of opportunity here. I want to go into deep into two sections of the PlayStation platform so you really get an understanding of the advertising opportunities. We'll talk deeply about the store and view, but I wanted to just showcase uh, PlayStation Music. We partner with Spotify, and not only can you stream live music directly from the PlayStation platform, but you can actually set a soundtrack behind the games you're playing. A lot of folks really like that to keep their energy levels up. The other platform um, that I wanted to just hit on here is PlayStation Plus. PlayStation Plus is a subscription-based service, and we'll talk about the number of users who have signed into the PlayStation Plus um, network. This really is our active user base. They're really interested in downloadable content, exclusive offerings, and exclusive video clips that they can't get anywhere else. So let's jump into who the PlayStation audience is before we get too deep into the platform itself. Our audience is active. We have 68 million active accounts that have been active within the last 12 months. You can see we skew a little bit older than that pimply-faced teenager at an average age of about 26. We do scale a little heavier in male, but you can see that females are starting to make a comeback in the world of gaming. Our average age is between 18 and 34, but you can see that folks do a lot of things on their PlayStation platforms other than just playing games, although they do do a lot of that. And then you can see that 92% of PS4 users are connected to their PlayStation networks. Huge connectivity, huge social interaction. This is a community, and they act and feel like a group of people who are all bound by a common interest. So we've talked about who they are, and let's talk a little bit about the PlayStation Store. I think what's really interesting here is I talked about revolutionizing the purchase behavior. Being able to pre-order games, download games instantly while playing and doing other things, and buying anywhere on your mobile, your tablet, or a console. And while most of the purchases are made on console, you can see that we dominate the market. We're actually the number two retailer of PlayStation games, beating out Xbox, or I'm sorry, beating out Walmart, Best Buy, and Target. This means that your audience is active. They're leaned forward, and their wallets are open, and they're interested in purchasing new and amazing content and services. I'd like to show a little clip here so we can see exactly what the interface looks like in live, in action. We'll go around and play with the PlayStation afterwards during happy hour, so if you have any additional questions about functionality, let me know. So the first question I always get, because PlayStation is for gamers, is what about advertising? And do the PlayStation audience engage, react, and how are they, um, are they open to advertising on the platform? And overwhelmingly, the answer is yes. 59% of this segment audience that we um, did in this recent survey 
were actually paid attention or did some interaction with the ad unit. And only 6% found the ads annoying or off-putting. This stat really rules every decision we make on the platform. We are about gamers, and we want to make sure we protect the experience for our gamers. Your advertising will be natively inserted into the PlayStation platform and will become a part of the overall organic experience. We're very careful to make sure that this bar always stays this far to the left. My left, your right. So let's feel, let's jump right in. For those of you who are unfamiliar, the moment you turn on your console, you are um, shown a What's New screen. This is the PS4 What's New screen. This screen shows all kinds of social interaction. What are your friends doing? What games are they playing? What movies are they watching? What content are they, content are they interacting with? This unit can actually click out to a URL, click to your product page within the store, or stream video. It really is the home base for all gamers and allows them to see what the community is doing and what's, uh, what's new, literally what's new. On PlayStation 3, you can see it looks pretty similar to PlayStation 4, a little bit cleaner interface here. What's interesting about the older platform is that we allow targeting um, age and geo. You can also click out to your a URL, click to your product page, or stream full screen video as well. This really is the hub. So let's kind of move in. Now we're going to enter into the store. The first thing you see if sponsored is a welcome roadblock. Look how beautiful this ad unit is. It literally takes up your whole television screen. Think 64 inch televisions in HD. Huge, beautifully placed ad unit. You can't miss it. This ad unit's interesting because you can actually utilize the creative support teams at PlayStation to help you create this. Take some of the burden off of your creative agencies. This gets full attention and extremely high engagement rates. You can play full screen video in the, or video in the ad unit, maximum engagement. You can see that it has three separate screens so you can continue to provide more information, uh, additional trailers, or different clips from your gaming. What I think is really interesting here is that everyone comes to the store. It's where you purchase content, you download games and demos, um, you can add, um, go and buy add-ons. This is a, a hub, and our community understands this is where you, that they need to go to get the latest and greatest. This ad unit is serious maximum engagement, total high reach. Once you enter the store, I want to point out one quick thing. You can see in the navigation bar here that the word spotlight is, higher, uh, is highlighted. This spotlight unit is the first thing that users see when they enter into the store. However, if the, ro if the welcome roadblock had been sponsored, the word welcome roadblock will, would be up above spotlight. We do this on purpose. We want to make sure our users can get back to the experience that they saw. Perhaps they want to go back and share it with a friend. We want to make navigation really easy. There's no hunting and pecking trying to find a co-branded ad unit to drive you back to that welcome roadblock. It's always in the nav bar. As is the spotlight. You can see that you can stream video for a hover over opportunity. Another big full screen ad unit. You have to come to this page and scroll through. Your eyeballs are going to see this ad. Again, the PlayStation Store team will help with all creative opportunities. We want to take off as much of the work as we can. This is my personal favorite. It's the branded storyline. This is the unit, if you have a story to tell, this is how you're going to accomplish your messaging. It lives in the navigation bar that I pointed out earlier and really um, allows users to spend as much time with your information, your content, your videos, your photo galleries as possible. I love this unit for a number of reasons, but particularly because of the engagement that users show. It has up to three screens, and you can have as much, three to five screens, and you can have as much video content 
in each box as long as it's under um, a maximum megabyte level. This is perfect for longer form content that you're looking for a distribution partner. It's perfect for storytelling. It's perfect for those advertisers who have a more detailed or nuanced message that they're trying to get across to their customers. It's also full of endless possibilities. Being able to share this out with your friends, watch the videos again, is huge. And we wanna work with you to create the right story that our users will respond to, to drive engagement. This is the perfect opportunity to take native to a whole new level. How are you going to build content that hits the passion points of the PlayStation fan base? Great unit here. The category sponsorships are our bread and butter. Obviously, new games, a big passion point for this audience. It's the most traffic page within the store. It's perfect for endemic advertisers who are looking to promote game add-ons, and additional downloadable content or trailers for a new game coming up. There are also multiple other categories if you have clients who are interested in movies, television, or perhaps they are one of those add-on customers. And we round out our offering with our run of site banners, native ad banners. This is our foundational unit. It provides the scale and reach to get your messaging out and it really will round out your overall budget to achieve that scale that you're desiring. Great ad units for maximum reach. So we've talked about the ad units. I want to move into some other sponsorship opportunities. We talked about the holiday packages coming out this year. We have additional live events that we're looking for co-branded partners who are interested in pushing the boundaries of what advertising and sponsorship is. This is really those offline events like E3 and CES. Our live events can be anything from a pay-per-view to a free event. As a matter of fact, we streamed our E3 press conference this year and had over 3 million views. Huge for a press conference that's an hour long in LA. We're, again, we're looking for co-branded partners. All of the um, navigation, this is a native application and can be found directly within the PlayStation Store. A really great opportunity for us to talk about. Finally, I wanted to talk about PlayStation View. We launched PlayStation View at the beginning of this year in three markets in a beta program. We launched in Chicago, Philadelphia, and New York. And at E3, we announced that we were um, pushing out to San Francisco and LA. This is a live and on-demand television service that is purposely out to meet the needs of cord cutters and cord nevers. We have over 78 channels a three-day look-back window for live television, and on-demand that's stored in the cloud. So no more running out of uh, space on your DVR. I think what's really exciting about PlayStation View is the opportunity to move forward with cherry-picking out or um, buying the package that works for you. We released two um, standalone offerings, one with Machinima and one with a sports content app. So if you're interested in additional gaming content, you can actually go out and buy the subset that you're looking for. I think it really offers a lot of personalization to the overall PlayStation View platform. As we continue to roll out, you'll notice that um, partners like NBC and CBS, just to name two of them, maintain control of the advertising units, except for that two minute spots of local TV. And that's where PlayStation comes in. And so think about our advertisers who are looking to reach their television audience in a connected TV device and how we can utilize that pod to really extend their linear television program. $15.4 billion in software sales. PlayStation is the number one gaming console in the world, outselling Xbox two to one globally. The video advertising and integration opportunities are really focused on our gaming community, being native to the platform and being big and beautiful on the largest screen in your house. We didn't get into original content today. I'll talk more about that in tomorrow's Lunch and Learn when we talk about Crackle. But there is opportunity to integrate brands directly into content specifically programmed for the PlayStation audience. Powers came out last fall, purposely written for, or purposely um, 
screenplay for the PlayStation audience really hit the passion points of this fan base. We talked about PlayStation View, the live TV network, and we talked about advertising opportunities this holiday and through our live events that are streaming through the PlayStation platform. I think there's a lot of opportunity here for us to partner, and I hope you guys are excited about it as I am. The beer's in the back, we've got the PlayStation set up in front, and if somebody wants to challenge me on a dancing game, I'm all in. Thank you.